held in my hands like it's no thing Jacket same color as the smoke stains Pray to God that I never grow old But I also pray to God that I grow wings Damn, can't lie, today was a good day Fell flat, new cool kicks and a kick-ass ride And I kick it with my dogs, we just trying to get by Just a couple of puns, all trying to get by Just a couple of teens, all trying to survive Live to the max, cause you don't live it twice Couple green thumbs, all highs, okay Welcome back to the new era of Life to the Max podcast. I'm your host, the Quad Father, Maximilian Gross, and today I have a very special guest, John Sarasani. This guy's blowing up on Instagram. He's doing great things in casinos. He's probably pissing off a lot of people, a lot of c- casino owners in Vegas, but I got the freaking man. The freaking man is here right now. Josh Irsani may make some fucking noise. Happy to be here, man. This is pretty cool setup you got here. I don't think I've ever been to a podcast studio that's uh, quite the setup. It's usually like if it's at a home, it's usually like in the back room of someone's basement, not like the main freaking <laughs> living room, so pretty cool. <laughs> I thought you would be because like yeah. you're like, you're like all over the place. You're hanging out with like these influencers and these yeah. YouTubers. It's crazy, dude. It's it's been a it's been a wild ride, buddy. And as things like continue to expand, it's like I'm getting new layers introduced to the to the mix. Right. You know, um, I have okay. So for instance, I have a 16 year old son. All right. I got Jimmy Kimmel following me. I got Nick Cannon following me. I got Burt Kreischer following me. You, you, you think my son give, gives gives two shits? No. When Bryce Hall, the 24-year-old YouTuber, starts following my son's like, Dad, Dad that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're hitting different audiences, man. And, and I think it's uh, the combination of the motivational shit that I started with, which is, hey, set your, set your own ceiling. But also, I've introduced this gambling content, which isn't even about gambling. It's more of a lifestyle thing with, hey, do whatever you want in this world. I have, I have a hobby that's gambling. I didn't get rich gambling, guys. No one, no, one, no one ever thinks I did. But, but that content combined with each other really expands to a pretty damn wide audience. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that. I get, it's crazy to think that like a bunch of YouTubers are at these high stake like blackjack tables. You know what I mean? I, I, I didn't expect that, but that's where you're going to find them. <sighs> but, you know, it's, it, <laughs> it, it, it's funny, man. I, I gambled with, um, this guy, Steve will do it. Uh, last, last February is a popular guy that was on the, you probably, do you know who that is? He was the, one of the, nel- yeah, the full set, uh, clock is right there, bro. Oh, do you know who he is? Okay. I, it's very clearly. Like, you yeah, do. I know who they are. Well, uh, so I did some shit with him and, and it was fine. And then, uh, just recently Brett, the Bryce Hall guy, uh, it was kind of funny though. These, these guys don't. Listen, if you're my age and you know how to gamble, there's thir- certain things you follow, <laughs> certain ways to go about it. These guys don't yeah. give a fuck. And I'm just sitting back watching them. It's like, especially Bryce, it's like, dude, there's no way you're ever going to win. Casinos must love you the way you gamble. <laughs> how, how old are uh, how What's like the age difference of the people you gamble with? Like these kids? Like- well, you know, it's funny that you say that, man, because like I said, I, I, I feel like a good look for me, bro, is, is hanging out with like, People my age or older. Hey, right. if, if you know, if Burt Kreischer wants to hang out, those guys have got a couple yeah. years. I mean, hey, th- this is cool. Um, I don't know how much of a good look it is for me to be hanging out with these guys half my age, but uh, I got to tell you though, man, it's social media doesn't give a shit sometimes, man. D- Dana White hangs out with him. He's he's older than me, so you know it is what it is, yeah. and uh, it, it's it's funny the new social media is is the mainstream. You know, you used to have like traditional platforms, right? Like. When I grew up, okay, for instance, when I grew up, I, I would watch Jay Leno, Conan O'Brien, and, you know, David Letterman. Right. You, you know, I start following Jimmy Kimmel. You think my kids give a shit? That it, I even had somebody comment that would just wait five years. People like you are going to be more famous than, than Jimmy Kimmel. And, and it got me thinking, you know, they weren't saying me, and I'm not saying it to be like saying I'm more famous than Jimmy Kimmel. I mean, he hosts the damn Oscars. But, but what, I'm, what I'm saying is the social media stars is the future, bro. Like, yeah. the, do you know anyone under 30? that watches Kimmel or Fallon? No, it's people my age watch it. Right. When I was my daughter's age, 
I was watching Letterman and Conan O'Brien. They, they ain't watching these guys anymore. So, so there's definitely a shift that we're right in the middle of. And um, it's, it's already happened, but I think it's going to even be more so 20 years from now. You, you make a really good point because like YouTube is like the new news. Do you know yep. what I mean? YouTube yep. is what people like to watch. They get their news there, wherever uh, channel they follow, whether it's like uh, you know conservative or liberal, whatever they choose, you know, and uh, Mm-hmm. People don't like uh, watch regular news on the TV anymore. They go to YouTube. They go to their social media apps. You know, they yep. go to their Instagram, and then they figure out what's going on. Well, yeah, and, and the damn the damn traditional media with with the news too. It's um, I had a guy that I'm friends with that um, was a producer at CNN of all of all places. He's actually a very conservative <laughs> guy, but he was a producer at CNN, and and he said, "Listen, man, it, it, once we start giving like both sides of the view or 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 whatever, we, we have to lean into the liberal crowd because if we do anything conservative, we lose our liberal followers, yeah. and and Fox News probably feels the exact same way. And you got this emergence now coming all the way around though." with companies like News Nation that are saying, hey, we're, we're not going to lean either way. Right. So it's it's kind of all happening full circle. And, you know, I think social media, again, is, is um, you know, I think a, a reflection of that. Yeah, these kids are doing great things. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yep. I, like, I, I was watching uh, Aiden Ross and Donald Trump with my brother yesterday. Okay. I couldn't fucking believe that. <laughs> I'm like, this guy is interviewing ir- interviewing. Uh, Donald Trump. Pretty cool. It's like crazy, right? You, know, like yeah. you would think like a freaking reporter from CNN would be interviewing him, but no, it's some kid that was chilling in his basement decided, yep. I'm going to make a living off being a Twitch streamer and yep. doing reacts. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You know I mean? Well, dude, and, and until my Instagram got popular, I didn't even know who these guys were. Like, um, Okay, so so Saturday night, we're at the Aria Casino in Las Vegas. Or actually, this was Friday night, excuse me. Literally, what are we, Tuesday, th- four days ago. Yeah. And it, it was like this kind of cool moment for me. Not not like a pinch me kind of thing, but it was like a, I kind of observed what was happening, okay? A, a, a regular celebrity by the name of TJ Lavin, he hosts... Um, the challenge on CBS, a very popular uh, reality show, he used to be a BMX biker and all the X Games guys is around my age, okay? You know, he follows me on Instagram, like, hey, dude, you should come on and play blackjack with me. He's on one side of me, Bob Bob Menery, part of the Full Send guys on the other side of me, and then Bryce Hall's on the other side of me. And it was like, not like an orchestrated thing. We all just only knew each other because of... Like really, because of my Instagram page, is, is right. you know, I, th- I think Bryce and Bob might have already known each other, but it was just kind of like a cool thing. Right? you're sitting there; these are people you wouldn't have met otherwise. Yeah. And, and you know, and then you know, before we know it, we got a crowd of you know twenty or thirty people around us trying to you know watch us play blackjack. It's like oh, that's kind of cool, you know yeah. what I mean? And, and, really cool. and especially when a guy like TJ's there, who's a mainstream, you know, very known person, and you know, people are asking me for pictures, just like they're asking TJ for pictures. I mean, pretty fucking cool, you know. Really is. Yeah. Uh, well, let's back it up and let's go to the origin of John C. Sure. Sonny, right? Yeah. Let's uh, let's do that. So, you're born and raised in Schaumburg, right? Schaumburg, Illinois, baby. Schaumburg, Illinois, born and raised. And how do, how did uh, your life progress from like you know growing up to adolescence to going to college? So football really was always the driving force in my childhood and uh, really a, a lot of my life. Uh, my dad was a high school, the head high school football coach at Schaumburg High School. Um, he, he, my, my, I had an older brother that was five years older than me. He was a very good quarterback. Um, ended up getting a scholarship to play at Wisconsin in the early 90s. That ended up not working out for him there, and he ended up switching over to Indiana State um, and starting at quarterback over there. And, you know, it's fine. And now he's a high school football coach and um, high school teacher in, um, in a Leiden High School. And, um, you know, for me, it was a little bit different because I'm, unlike my brother, who was a normal sized guy, he's a big six foot one, six foot two, or whatever, quarterback kind of build. I, <laughs> I was a I was a foot taller than everybody starting like in first first grade. <laughs> like like I, I looked like the fifth grader playing with the kindergartners at the damn playground. I was, I was <laughs> and and, uh, and not only that, I was more athletic that, than most people too. So I'm a foot taller, more athletic. It was very you know um, obvious that I that I was going to be really good at football when when I got older. I, I couldn't even play football till seventh grade though because. Um, in Schaumburg, the little leagues did it by based on weight class, so that, so the kids oh, yeah. wouldn't get hurt. So if I would have 
played in third grade, I literally would have been playing against eighth graders. <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> even though you're both, you know, 100 pounds, the eighth graders could kick your ass if you're nine. You know, yeah. what I mean? so my dad wouldn't let me play, but um, but he let me play in seventh grade, and even then, I had to play line because I was so much big. I wasn't built like a lineman. I'm built like a freaking tight end or linebacker. But but the way it was set up, so you're it, on the line. That. Well, they, they made you because they, they didn't want, you know, some kid that's bigger than everybody getting, getting the ball. So they made the bigger kids play line. It was a, it was a rule. Okay. Um, they'd have a weigh in before each game. And if you're over a certain amount, you weren't allowed to get the ball or be near the ball. You, you, you had to be a, a lineman. And, uh, you know, they did it to protect the kids and, and maybe that made sense or whatever. But it wasn't really till ninth grade um, that I got to play off off of the line. And um, my dad wanted me to follow in my brother's footsteps playing um playing quarterback and, and and that was fine but um sophomore year the varsity t- we didn't have a varsity tight end so they moved me up to tight ends I fucking knew you were a tight end <laughs> i fucking knew it i called it i was gonna yeah. call it man i was like either tn t- defensive end or tight end right and I, and I fucking knew you were gonna be a tight end you're like you look like grok yeah yeah i, I think <laughs> I, for sure although nowadays brother i don't even these tight ends are like uh i'll tell you a funny J- jason kelsey story in a second but yeah. but but i but i moved on and have been good at, good at tight end and uh you know, was huge. And well, sometimes I look at the, I was too big to pick, play quarterback, but then I kind of laugh at myself. You look at like guys like Cam Newton and, you yeah. know, they're, they're fucking their biggest yeah. 6'5, 270 playing yeah. quarterback. So I guess I could have, but, but it worked out for me playing tight end, man. I got a full scholarship to Notre Dame. Uh, I was a high school. Uh, all, fighting Irish. That's right, man. Cool. That's right, man. High school All American. And um, yeah, that's pretty much my story. Had a little bit of adversity at Notre Dame. But uh, I ended up transferring to Northwestern University. Um, oh, Swiss. These are big universities, man. Brother, I'm going to tell you right now, dude. I, I had the best of both worlds going from Notre Dame to Northwestern. First of all, Northwestern was freaking good. It was the mid-90s. They were really good at football. Yeah. And um, I, uh, to this day, just because of perception, right? No, Notre Dame's good at academics and good at football. Northwestern's good at academics and good at football, right? And both of them are, are you could arguably, you know, the same on each of those categories, although Notre Dame traditionally is better than a fo- better at football, but they're both big time programs. Right. Mm. And um, <laughs> to this day, brother, um, if I tell people I, I played football at Notre Dame, they're like, holy shit, you must have been a good football player. <laughs> if I say I played football at Northwestern, they say, holy shit, you must be smart. And right. As a guy in his 40s, would you rather be thought of as smart or good in football? So, so you know, it's like, uh, I would say uh, good at football. So <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, Notre Dame, I mean, like, they were good all last year too. Like. They're good, period. But I got to tell you, dude, it wasn't until probably the last couple of years with the social media shit that I that I was reminded how big of a deal it is to play football at Notre Dame, dude. People treat you yeah. different. It, like, like, it's been, it's. Bigger than saying you played on an NFL team. If I would tell you I went to Ball State and then played a couple years on the Eagles, right. you'd be like, oh, that's all good for you, man. Oh, he played on the Eagles. So I played at Notre Dame. Nothing about the NFL, so I played at Notre Dame. They treat you like a different fucking person, man. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding you. People really, really love that shit. And uh, I just had so much other shit going on in my life, buddy. I, I never really even talked about it as an adult. I wouldn't even tell people I went to Notre Dame. Like, Where'd you go to school? Northwestern. Okay, next fucking subject. Like, Did you play a sport? You're a big guy. Yeah, I played football. Oh, okay. And then the conversation would end there because I was always building other shit. It really wasn't until this social media stuff that I was reminded again how big of a freaking deal the Notre Dame thing is. And uh, yeah. I'm very blessed no, and fortunate. Absolutely, man. Yeah. You know, a lot of good football players come out of Notre Dame. But it, yeah. uh, we were on the phone uh, like a, like a week ago. And we were talking about how you like decided to walk away from football a little bit because of uh, a nerve pain that you were having in your neck. Can you elaborate? Yeah, man. That? So um, about ha- so there's one damn thing I kicked myself in the ass for. My dad would always tell me it was a blessing in disguise. Never being my football career ending early, but um. So my senior year, um, <laughs> we sucked my senior year at Northwestern. Like, I should have went to the NFL the year prior. Uh, we had a new head coach. It was just stupid. Like, this guy's name's Randy Walker, rest in peace. But he came over from Miami of Ohio, and he wanted to make a point to the program. And he's a hard-nosed guy. And 
we would just beat the shit out of each other in practice every day, dude. Um, like mm-hmm. I'm not even going to tell you some of the things. He'd, he'd be in jail nowadays for some of the things that, that he was having us do. But um, rest in peace, though. He's a hard-nosed football po- coach, and he is different from mentality back then, let's just say, okay? Oh, he, he was the last of a dying breed with yeah. that stuff. But um, And I'm saying that in a positive way, really. Of course. But, um, <laughs> dude... <laughs> He would have okay. There's some, there's a block in football called the ISO. All right, it's yeah. when you have a fullback line up behind the quarterback in an I formation and a running back behind him. Okay, the quarterback hands the ball to the running back and just follows the fullback into the line of scrimmage. While on the other end of the ball, the linemen are getting blocking other linemen. There's nobody to block the linebacker who's three yards off the ball except for the fullback that's three yards off the ball the other way. Okay. And the linebacker's job is to meet that fullback in the hole. It's an ISO, like an isolation block. Okay. Right. So they run as fast as they can into each other, like this, all right? Yeah. The running back, and if the fullback wins, the running back runs behind him and you know, hopefully goes and scores a touchdown or something. Well, when you do that block, leverage wins. It's not just the biggest, baddest guy. It's whoever gets lower because you got to get underneath the person's pads, okay? Well, Randy Walker was, was, such, was such, again, I'm saying this positive, I'm friends with his son, Jamie, if Jamie's hearing this by any chance, and his, and his, uh, what, and his wife, um, Tammy. But uh, we would run that damn, in practice every damn day, all of our, oh all of our fullbacks ended up freaking getting concussions and hurt. So me and the other tight end were both pretty damn good. He ended up playing the NFL for a couple of years, actually. And so they said, we're going to just go with a double tight offense. Okay, good. More playing time for us. I don't got to split them. Two tight ends will be on the damn field. Well, the thing is, we still have this damn iso- isolation, but iso block in our formula. But how are you going to run that with two tight ends when you don't have a fullback? Well, actually, John, no, you're going to move into the backfield and play fullback when we run that play. Okay. okay. I'm pumped up. I never played fullback before. I'm six foot five, 270 pounds. And, you know, linebackers are typically six foot one. And, uh, you know, they're in the Big Ten and have been playing this since they were freaking eight years old, probably. And yeah. here I am, six foot five. And I started playing the position at 22 years old. And uh, we're going to run as fast as we can into each other. And remember, the low man wins. If you're six foot five, that's too tall to be playing fullback. All right. That's why linebackers and fullbacks are usually. Five foot eleven to six foot one, really. Period. For the most part, in, in, inside linebackers. So slowly but surely, to win that to win that fight, I started dropping my head. Okay, because you got to get lower. Before you know it, I'm running to the line of scrimmage at a ninety degree angle with my hips, with my head just straight down and running as low as I can to the ground. Now, rule number one in football is if you never have your head down. Because if you get hit in the top of the head, your spinal cord's then in a straight line, okay? Whereas if you have your head up, you get hit here and you get hit in your face mask. And yeah, you might, you know, screw up some muscles in your neck if it's hard enough, but that impact is protecting your spinal cord, yeah. okay? Well, you know, it takes its toll throughout the course of the year or halfway through the year, and I start getting tingles in my damn leg, And I'm like, what the hell is this? And I just kind of dismiss it because there's something in football called stingers and it's scary, but it goes away. You usually get them down your arm. You only get them down your arm and your arm goes numb for four seconds and then it comes back. It's a pinched nerve. Okay. And it's it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. But if you're going to play these, no, it's freaking scary, scary the first time you get one. And uh, anyone that plays the positions I'm talking about knows exactly what I'm talking about. Well, my dumb ass starts getting him in my damn leg. I don't think anything of it. And again, we have a head coach that wants badass players out there. And mm-hmm. we fucking sucked, by the way. We were like three and eight that season. Nobody gives a shit about Northwestern football that year. There's nobody, nobody ever in America has ever said, hey, how about that 1999 Northwestern team? They sure, they sure were tough. No one's ever said that. Um, <clears throat> so year ends, and I'm getting a physical for the blue gray all-star game it was on christmas day and, and uh, to go play in this thing and it's for seniors that are graduating that you know are supposed to be going to the nfl 
I end up get I end up going to that. There's two All Star games. There's a uh, the the Senior Bowl and the Blue Gray game was the kind of the second one. Um, I didn't I didn't, I didn't make the the, the Senior Bowl is more for like first and second round draft picks. The mm-hmm. the all the the one I was in is more for like middle round to late round draft picks, and that's the one I was in. So just to give you a perspective, I wasn't going to be like you know some first rounder here, but um, right. I. Uh, it, it ends up uh, just randomly in the physical. Everything's fine. Anything bothering you? Just anything we need to know? Just casually, the doctor says that. Like, ah, no, no, no. Is you sure nothing at all? Not really. Hey, well, I've been doing getting this one thing down my leg the last six weeks. And you're describing it to him. You touch my shoulder here. I feel it in my ankle. He goes, wait, so I'm pressing this right now on your shoulder, John. You, you said you're feeling your ankle? I go, yeah. He goes, no. I go, well, it's a stinger. He goes, you don't get stingers in your leg, buddy. I go, okay. <laughs> got an MRI. Didn't pass the physical. They said, well, we got to get this checked out before I approve you to go play in this game. Got the damn MRI. Me and my dad and uh, the head athletic trainer at, at Northwestern, um, you know, went to meet with the doctor for the MRI, MRI results uh, shortly thereafter. And he pointed out this contusion to my spinal cord. Okay. <sighs> and uh, he said, it's you're done like he goes listen man it, 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 there's nothing wrong with you but if you keep playing football it's just a matter of time because you see this gray area here it's, it's weakening so it's weaker than everybody else's and it's just a matter of time before that thing snaps and you're in the, you're in a wheelchair the rest of your life yeah man spinal cord injury is no joke i mean look at me man Dude. You know, I can see it if I, oh. well that's buddy that's why when we were talking man you know it, it's like can i just tell you something since we talked yeah sure Okay, so I told you my mom was in a wheelchair. She had she had multiple sclerosis. We talked yeah. about this off off camera. And my mom's my, my 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 mom's MS at that time of my life was progressing. You know, it was getting a little bit worse and worse. And so the idea of being in a wheelchair with this thing, and no one was going to take that risk. You know, so you got your yeah. dreams of playing in the NFL gone, but you're also like, thank God they did this physical, and we didn't find out when it snapped. You know what I mean? Like, so you yeah. got that kind of going. Um, but then since. Uh, since uh, me and you talked, I'm on an airplane going to Vegas last week, last Thursday, and I fly United, I fly first class, and they have all these damn movies and shit on the back of the seat that you yeah. can choose from and whatever. I must have seen this thing on there the last 10 times I've flown. Always scrolled right past it, didn't know what it was about, okay? And because the title doesn't really show what it's about. And I'm like, eh, you know what? I'll watch this one today. It was about... I forgot his damn name. I'm following him on Instagram, too. I forgot his name. I'm following him now. But the stunt double for Harry Potter, okay? While they were filming Harry Potter, he was doing a freaking stunt, perfectly healthy guy, just like you were. And oh, but, I still am. All right, buddy. There you go. Still exactly. am, buddy. Yeah. It's just a roadblock. L- it. Love it, buddy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. You might be the healthiest person I know mentally every time we've talked. Um, but... It, it was a situation where, where he's perfectly healthy, living this life as, as a stunt man for in, in, in Hollywood, and um, he snapped his vertebrae and it, it put him in a wheelchair. So just, just like that, you know it's what I crazy. mean? So I don't know if the algorithm of life is talking to me, buddy, because they knew me and you were talking, they were going to have this, but something made me watch that fucking movie the other day, brother. So anyway, buddy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's, I'm, a, it's, it's a crazy experience being a spinal cord injury, like just yeah. learning a whole new life. It's basically a paradox. It's like your life is slipped upside down and you have to learn everything new and you have to rely on a bunch of people. So it, it uh, requires a tremendous amount of patience, you know? So, But I am grateful every single day I wake up. Good. Every single day, and I'm grateful to be talking to you right now, man. I really am. Thank you, man. You got you got to watch that movie. I think you are going to have a lot of relatable things uh-huh. with him. Yeah. But um, thanks for having me here. Of course, yeah. So this pain that you had, what did it feel like? Your foot fell asleep. It didn't even wasn't even a pain. It was just whenever you hit me in my shoulder or my neck, I, I felt the sensation in my ankle. So. There's only one. Do you, do you still feel it? No, no, I don't feel it. That's fine. In fact, in fact, I got the itch when I was about 26 years old. A few years later, to mm-hmm. say, "Fuck it, let's go play in the NFL." And uh, 
and uh, I started working out for it. And then I like got I hurt my ankle once working out. I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm too old. So that one I actually regret a little bit. I should have just I because to this day, dude, I'll wake up off a dream in the middle of the damn night. It'll be like this detailed shit, dude. It didn't even start happening until I was in my 40s, by the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like that I decided to go back and play and then I wake up and realize, wait a minute, I'm not 28. You know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, brother, I don't even know what, what position. I, you talked about Gronkowski. Fuck Gronkowski. How about these other guys like Jason Kelsey? Like, Tra- Travis Kelsey. Or yeah, tra- tra- Travis Kelsey, the Kittle guy on the uh, 49ers. Oh, fucking the, the guy on the Ravens. is Mark Andrews. Brother, these guys are like fucking power forwards and small forwards and basketball in the NBA playing tight end, dude. I don't even know if I can play tight end right now. <laughs> well, I was with Jason Travis's brother, Jason Kelsey. We were playing blackjack together and, uh, and he was a center for those that don't know. And he just retired from the Eagles. And I'm like, oh, dude, I ran a four, seven in college. I don't even know what position I would be able to play in the NFL right now. And he goes, dude, I ran a four, seven. <laughs> he's, he's the fucking center. <laughs> So I, I don't know, man. I think I probably would have had to gain thirty pounds and play defensive tackle or yeah, something. Yeah. Okay, so we uh, we got a little past your uh, origins. You, yeah. you grew up in Shawbur. You That's went right. to all these colleges. Yeah, man. And, uh, you uh, attended, you know, football teams mm-hmm. and all this stuff. Um, and then, uh, what degree did you get in? And uh, how did you like progress from like where you were to where you are now? Okay, because like. You're yeah. a fucking star. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah we went from, um, so it was December of my senior year in college when this happened. And this is actually my fifth year because I stayed an extra year for football. So I was actually done with school. Now, my plan had been to play in the NFL. So that just gets turned upside down in December. So, okay, well, what the fuck is I was going to just train for hopefully getting drafted. And it um, didn't work out that way. So now I don't have a plan. Um, luckily at Northwestern university, they have a gr- outstanding as I'm sure most, you know, good, good colleges do have a, a very quality career services center. So I go on to the career services center and just start, they had uh, companies coming in to interview seniors. I just, I just start putting myself in time slot after time slot with every damn company that, uh, that I thought, uh, might be interesting. And, uh, there was this one damn company, man, it was an insurance company, um, and uh, I never forget it. The, the, the manager's name is Don Mano. He, he sits down and sits across from me. And the first question he asked me is like, "So, what attracts you? What's what, what attracts you to being in the in the employee benefits world?" <laughs> I didn't know the fuck employee benefits meant. I had like twelve interviews over two days. I didn't even know what they did. <laughs> um, but but I'm blessed to have taken that job because it was that interview with that guy that he he. Um, he started speaking my language and, and that was to make money. And my dad was a high school gym teacher. You know, we grew up in Schaumburg. We had, we're middle-class family. We different, definitely weren't rich. Um, so we kind of always wanted that money. You know what I mean? Like I remember one of my friends had a freaking new Mustang when he was 16 and we thought he was so damn rich. You know what I mean? And yeah. we just didn't have things like that. And, um, Anyway, so I was driven by money, and uh, I'll never forget. He, t- he told me I'll, I should be if 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 I do what he, what I should be doing, I could be making a hundred grand um, by the end of my second year at the job. And um, the base salary was only thirty grand, though. So he was explaining it to me in terms of how commissions work and renewal commissions and things like that. And all I heard was, "I have a real opportunity to make a hundred grand in two years," and yeah. that's all I could hear because. We thought my dad was pretty damn well off, and he was probably making about that as a you know tenured teacher at Schaumburg High School, and uh, you know public school teachers in Illinois are, are not underpaid; they they get paid pretty well, and he was probably around that amount, maybe a little bit less at the, at that point. But a hundred grand in my head, I had that hundred grand in my head. Yeah. Well, I also had a job offer with with Accenture. Um, it was called Anderson uh, Anderson Consulting back then. They changed their name um, a few years uh, later, and. Um, the job offer there, I want to say it was, it was more than the 30 grand. It was like 52 grand or something like that. And uh, there was no commissions. And when the environment was explained to me, it was about team settings and working on different projects and these big accounts that you're going to get and all this stuff. And you're going to work under the umbrella of this person and you're going to you know, learn from him and then you could advance to this. And I asked him well, the same question. Well, when, when, how many years in till I would have the ability to make a hundred grand? Yeah. 
And it was not in two years, it was a long time. And, and it wasn't me dictating when that would be either. It was other people making that decision for me versus the insurance sales environment. You're controlling your own future, man. If you get good at this, I'm guys, trying to be on a post. you know what I mean? You, you could sky's the limit on what you could make. So, um, I, t- I took the risk, you know, Accenture was a, and- they're called and- again, Anderson, Arthur Anderson was a very big, uh, company and very known in Chicago, downtown office, right in the loop. Holy shit. You're at Accenture. That's, that's yeah. the job, bro. Um, I took this job with great West life and annuity that no one ever fucking heard of. Um, they're based out of Denver, literally nobody knew who the fuck they were and um ended up being great for me man because they they taught me how to sell we took professional sales courses which really even even then was the end of a dying breed a lot of companies didn't really train their sales reps anymore these guys sent us out to their home office for two weeks we did role playing sat in classes and uh that's the best skill set i ever had really learning to sell that's amazing that is so uh Let's uh, let's fast forward to the social media guru you are right <laughs> now. When did that start? So it started about a year and a half ago. I um, I started posting because I was trying to. Um, I had decided to write a book. Okay, and the book was really going to be just me dusting off of a book that I had written ten years earlier. So this is twenty twenty one. And I went like, okay, I could do the 10th anniversary of my, my book. It's called Paid Training that I wrote back in 2011 with a new perspective on it. Well, I thought I'd go start talking about it on social media, maybe be on some podcasts, get a little energy around it. Didn't have shit else to do. It's during the pandemic, right? Well, um, as I started rewriting the book, the book was nothing like the original version. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to make a whole damn new book and didn't really have a name for it. But during one of the podcasts, one like this, where, where I'm somebody else's guest, um, they asked me about how I left corporate America to work for myself. And the question was surrounded by money. Okay, did you make more money? Did, you, did your salary go down? How long did it take you to, to make more? And I go, you know what? I actually gave myself a 2,000% raise when I did this. And it just came out right off the top of my head. And the guy goes, what? And then we all started thinking about it. And I started doing the math in my head. I go, no, I it, literally, I kind of just threw it out there tongue in cheek. But no, it was about a 2,000% raise. <laughs> like literally, literally gave myself a 2,000% raise for doing the exact same job. The only difference is now I was up on top of the org chart and not making money for other people. I was making it for myself. And um, when, the more I leaned into that, the more I started thinking about how I could help other people, things that I picked up along the way that they ain't going to pick up, dude. They're not, they're not going to pick it up either. They're, they're not going to realize the scam of corporate America keeping people as little little pieces of the, the chess game to make someone else rich and protect the king. You know what I'm saying? Um, they might never even figure that out, which I figured that out at the age of 27 when I started my company. But then also when you're out on your own, little things along the way to make that company successful when you're competing against bigger companies that have been around for 100 years, have 200 offices around the world, have 20,000 employees. Shit, how are you going to compete with them, dude? You're one person. You don't have any capital behind you. You're working out of your house at your damn kitchen mm-hmm. table. Well, you know what, buddy? That's for me to know. You don't, the, the client doesn't have to know that. Shit. So I'm, do little things. Like I'm not, I'm not going to name my company after myself and draw attention to the fact of how little we are. I'm going to give it a big name, you know what I mean? And we're not going to say I'm working out of my house. I'm going to get a freaking box at the UPS store, and I'm going to call it Suite Number 300 with this fancy address, you know what I mean? You know, and and this is fucking 2005, bro, that I'm doing this shit. I mean, nowadays, get the fuck out of here. Like, between fucking voice over IPs and how easy it is to make a website now, I mean, shit. You could make yourself look like you're a billion dollar organization, dude. You could go buy paid media spots and bullshit. Look at this. I mean, <laughs> dude, do a press release on Yahoo Finance about how cool you are. Like none of that shit really existed. It might have, but not. It wasn't as easy to do as as it is now. I'll tell you that much. So, um, yeah, man. I mean, that, that that's what I did. Uh, so so in promoting two thousand percent raise, I. Um, um, the social media kind of started taking a life of its own on where the social media aspect not only became more fun, it's just more popular. 
you know, not everyone wants to sit there and read a book, buddy. Not everybody wants to tune into a podcast. As 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 you know, it's hard. It's hard to get people to sit and watch a whole fucking podcast. Um, the so, social media is a lot different, man. And once you hit that algorithm with Instagram, like for for me, for YouTube, I post a podcast. You know, who's watching that podcast? People I told about to go watch it, or people from my Instagram that I told to go to YouTube and watch it. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. That YouTube algorithm, I'm not on it yet. You know, maybe there is an algorithm that that works. I I don't I don't know it yet. But Instagram, I've already hit that algorithm, man. I put a reel out there. Not only is it going to go to my half a million followers, it's going to go like to new people too, and then they're going to follow me because of it. I mean, how cool is that? that dude, that's amazing. Yeah. How do you say? Like, how do you think it would feel you behind 500,000 people? Can you imagine that? Like, you, and then you look behind and you're like, there's 500,000 <laughs> people that follow me. Dude, I'm going to tell you right now, bro. I didn't think it was even fucking real. Like, when I was when I was at about 100,000 followers, yeah, it was a big deal. But I kind of questioned a little bit of it because I had used a social media company at one point to help me try to grow my shit and never do that, by the way, anyone that's listening to this because they're all full of shit. I'm pretty sure one of them threw, sent me like a bunch of fake like bot followers. So I always kind of questioned how many people are real. And um, as it's grown, it's become very clear that it's fucking real because I can't walk down the fucking street without a person coming up and saying hi to me. Like, if I see a person come up to me and say, me and my dad send your shit back and forth every day, dude, you're the fucking funniest guy on the internet. That's a real person that I could see telling me this. Not, It's not a bot. <laughs> you, know what, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, and that happens literally every time I leave my house now, which is, which is pretty fucking cool. And wherever I'm at in the world. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like you're, you're, you've reached mm. fame and like, like mm. fortune. I like, Thank you. like it, it's like really, it's inspiring Thank because you. you did it on your own merit, you know? And I, I'm just wondering, um, you have the life, man. Obviously, like when <laughs> you were with all those chicks, bro, I was like, get, get the fuck out of here, man. I was like, what the fuck? like, John, you're not going to invite Max? <laughs> what the fuck is you? You know what I mean? Like, it's like you're like, say hello to it, say hello to Max, everybody. <laughs> Next time so we'll just, remember that. We have to remember that. Shout out, Max. What's up, Max? <laughs> Dude, you should have told me this two days ago. I was filming. Uh, I was filming. Um, so when's this gonna air? Probably next couple of weeks. Yeah. All right. Probably. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll do the snap. Okay. Uh, probably in a week. All right. So this might be out right around now-ish uh, when this is airing, or it's gonna come out very shortly. You'll like this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, a, a YouTube series called Bombshell Blackjack, where I just have a random pretty girl just sit down with me and play blackjack, and they don't really know what the fuck they're doing, and it's just yeah. it's combining, just, you know, fun to watch with blackjack. So tune in to Bombshell Blackjack next. <laughs> I will definitely tune in to Bombshell we, we only have three episodes right now, so I don't know. We'll see how those go. <laughs> we'll see how those go before we do a fourth. <laughs> But let me uh, let me get back to this. So so you reach fame, fortune, like mm -hmm. and like people like see your life and they're like, wow, this guy's cool. He's awesome. He's like a man. And some people might be envious. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So when you wake up in the morning, do you feel like you've reached your purpose? You've reached what you've wanted, or do you feel like it's just beginning? Good question. Um, I, I I'll tell you what, man. Um. A lot of times people ask me, okay, so where are you going with this? What's your, what's your fucking plan? Like, okay, you did this, now, now what? And I actually just got into a big argument with a guy named Brad Lee in uh, Las Vegas. He has a podcast that I was just on, and we, we almost went to blows with each other because he wants you to sell courses. He goes, well, you're doing all this shit, but you're not making any fucking money on it, so what the fuck are you doing? And I go, listen, motherfucker, all right, here's what I'm doing. Look at my fucking DMs right now. I got 20 probably in the last week with people telling me I changed their fucking lives and how much I motivated them to do something with their yeah. life. And it's not by me yelling, pay me a thousand fucking dollars and I'll toughen you the fuck up. It's by me literally just being me. And um, whenever I hear about any opportunities to monetize or, or anything else, it's just like, yeah, I'll, I'll look at it. I'll entertain that idea. But if it's going to do anything to sacrifice the brand 
and that brand being not, not not a monetary brand, that brand being that people are digging this and it's changing their lives. Yeah. And if I if I um, undercut, I, this is not the right word, but like if I undercut myself in, in that value proposition by by taking away my credibility with anything, dude, yeah. dude, I was just fucking doing a um. Golden Nugget online casino just paid me to fucking do a, put a reel up, and I did it because it was on brand. And it was fine to give me a couple bucks, and there's a promo code if you want to get you know fifty dollars yeah. a slot player or some shit like that. It was fine. I'm glad to have done it. But it's like even then I was like posting this. Ah, I'm not even comfortable posting this. It's like because I don't I don't need to make money doing this. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But I still did because it was on brand and I have a fine relationship with them and stuff. But but it's not like a priority for me at all, man. So so. You know, I, I, I'm kind of just thinking out loud while, while I get to the answer to your question, which which, which is, you know, I, I do think I've made it in the sense that I've served a purpose. You know what I mean? And, and I do think that if I was gone tomorrow, you know, a year from now, people would still talk to me because of the stuff I've done. Yeah. And, and, and that's the stuff I've done in the last year and a half, not not the stuff I did that made me millions when I was younger. The fact that I was like helping right. people. So as long as I could keep, growing that and and reaching a wider and wider audience and doing it my way i mean i think uh i think i'm gonna keep doing that i I mean right now bro i get pressure from people to you know it's an election year you know i'm getting pressure from people to you know fucking speak up dude everyone knows you like trump and it's like first of all you don't know that i never commented about that and um yeah i said it was fucked up when he got (laughs) tried to assassinate or the guy tried to assassinate him but i would have thought it was just as fucked up if you tried to assassinate biden Biden. or obama (laughs) you know exactly like you know it's crazy And, and, and and i say all that because it doesn't matter how i feel about politics it doesn't matter how i feel about a lot of things this page and what i'm fucking doing is trying to help people be the best version of themselves okay so whether I like Trump or Kamala Harris or, 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 you know, fucking some guy walking down the fucking street doesn't really fucking matter. I want people to be the best they could fucking be. You know, Jimmy Kimmel is a great example. You know, he follows me and I, I posted this thing about, hey, Jimmy Kimmel follows me. Kind of made a joke about it. Well, go look at the comments of that fucking post. People hate Jimmy Kimmel that are lean, lean on the conservative side. And yeah. I don't really know why, nor do I fucking care. That's not what this page is about. This page is about being the best he could fucking be. And you got a guy out of him that's dominated the industry he's in. He's got a fucking TV show on ABC. Okay. That's pretty fucking successful for a person that's chosen to be a comedian in his life. Exactly. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you can't take that away from him. So whatever the fuck you try to do in your life, you try to get to the top of that motherfucking mountain. And that's what we're doing here. Period. So you you definitely made a purpose. And you know what? Uh, something comes to mind with uh, what you just said. So for my podcast, the reason why I started it is because I wanted to share my story. I wanted people to, you know, like feel grateful for the little things they have in life. You know, breathing, like breathing, I thought was a per- breathing. I thought was a right, not a privilege, and it got taken away from me, man. Wow. You know, and what I always tell people is, it's like uh, people are like, "Oh, do you want to?" You're gonna make shit ton of money. You're gonna be famous one day. You're the only like quadriplegic podcast your host. And I'm like, dude, it's not about the money. It's about the journey. There you go. That's what it's about. Yep. You know what I mean? I love that. I, it's, I'm here to inspire and motivate people. Yep. I don't need. I don't. I don't need your freaking promo code. Right. I don't, <laughs> like, I, don't need this. I don't need you to tell me if I like. Trump, Biden, RFK Jr. I don't fucking care. Right. Yep. I'm here to motivate people. Yep. People who are having a bad day because it could be a lot worse a lot all worse. the time. Brother, when I walked in here and, and um, we this first time we've met in person, right? We FaceTimed a couple of times, but I got like this feeling over me, not not because of you in the wheelchair, not not even about you. It just reminded me of like watching my, my both of my parents passed away and. um I don't know. I just re- it just reminds me of stuff that I saw my dad taking care of my mom. That as an adult now looking back, you know, you're right. Yeah, it's like you don't as as a kid, especially you don't realize what's even going on. You know what I mean? And like what you just said, dude. Like I'm leaving here. I'm leaving here in an hour, and I'm going about my day. 
this is every day for you, man. You know what I mean? And, and, and you're still doing this. You have a smile on your fucking face and you're still doing it. Yeah, man. You know, and, and, and I, it just reminds me, dude, of like things I probably didn't realize as a kid that, that my parents were going through with, with my mom and shit. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, brother. It's good shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. Man, dude, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, obviously. And um, I appreciate you coming from Vegas to go do this podcast <laughs> yep. in Illinois because I know you probably have a busy schedule, but like uh, def- definitely, uh, definitely a great uh, conversation with you. Like you're, you're an amazing guy, I gotta say. And this is my first time in Sleepy Hollow. Sleepy Hollow, for everyone that doesn't know, because I know most of you don't know, even if you live in Chicago, it's this little town that's this big. <laughs> <laughs> right outside of Schomburg, but I've never met anyone that actually lives here. So people actually live in Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> yeah, dude, but you gotta do something for me. You gotta yeah. take me gambling with you. Really? <laughs> you want to gamble? Yeah, I'm dude, down. So let me ask you a question, man. So, so okay, so what, what's your Instagram? The Quadfather. Yeah. Okay. So I'm friends with somebody else just totally randomly is a, is a radio host and, and, and he, he calls himself the quad father too. Is that like a funny, like paraplegic joke? You guys all call yourself the quad, yeah. the quad father. It's kind of it's funny, but, but he, he's, he, he uses his arms. So what, what does quad mean? Does quad. So quadriplegic means you can't like quadru. So he's a tetraplegic. So a quadriplegic is a person that is paralyzed from the neck down. Okay. I'm paralyzed from the neck down in the worst possible spot, the cervical one spinal cord. Okay. So I usually about 20 to 15% of people die, stay alive. Really? With wow. that accident. Okay. So I'm just trying to live my best life. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, yeah. Yep. Well, I'm looking at you. You got the military stuff uh, behind you, man. I mean, that's pretty pretty dope you know when i talk about like my growth on social media um you know you lean into different things that the audience you know you know you you listen to people okay what what was popular why why did people like comment so much on this one why did i get dms about that and it's like oh shit i didn't even know and uh i I have this affinity toward or they have the affinity towards me i should say um law enforcement and, and military folks just love my fucking page dude like you would not believe and and Max, it's the funniest thing, brother. I, I put out a damn, I put out on a, on a damn reel because I talk about like not being a W two employee and working yeah. for yourself. And people be like, "Hey, shit, not W two employees. Quit shit, not them." So I made a reel. I would never do a reel like this now because this, yeah. but it, I go, "Hey guys, if, if you want to be a W two employee, go be a W two employee." My dad's a teacher. Hey, if you're a cop, go be a cop. I'm not, you know, maybe this page isn't for you. I'm talking about people in sales that want to go be entrepreneurs. That, that was originally yeah. who I was talking to. Well, I start getting flooded. By people like in fucking law enforcement yeah. being like, listen, motherfucker, <laughs> we all follow your page and you motivate us. Not, not only because a lot of us have side hustles and we're trying to learn from you, but also it just motivates us to be good fucking people. We, we think yeah. the damn same way. And uh, it, it was that that point, Max, I only had about 50 or 60,000 followers. It was that point at that point with just little little moments like that that I said, you know, I really got something here, man. I got something here, brother. You yeah. know. What does it take to like transition from a WT W two employee to mm-hmm. like your being your own boss? Yeah. Well, so first of all, <laughs> people are starting to use terms now that I say all the time that like <laughs> don't really Gen so, Pop. <laughs> Gen Pop. Well, so Gen Pop was around, but I don't think anyone was using it as effectively as I did, and now everyone's saying it. And uh, I'll get people to say it, come up to me. Like I got a guy come up to me, goes, dude. You took my term. I always call I always call non high limit people Gen Pop. I go, yeah, but when you said it, no one heard you. I say it all the time. Now people are <laughs> people are all saying it. Um, but the other thing is a W tour. I don't think really anybody was saying that be- before. I go, yeah, you can't be a W tour, and, and it was really born across the idea that hey man, if you're a W two employee, dude, just so you know. You're never going to be rich. the The system ain't set up for that, buddy. <laughs> you can't be get rich as a W two. So just face the facts. And uh, a lot of people don't like that, but it, but it's really morphed, <laughs> morphed. Into it's pretty pe- true. Well, I mean, it's, you're, it's, you're you're bending over backwards for a guy you don't even know. Dude, the people don't understand that if you're a W two employee. It's not just your relationship with your boss. There, there's a, a governing board. There's a board of directors at that organization that, that the CEO needs to answer to. 
and you start making too much money, buddy, they're going to be like, uh, why is that guy making 600 grand? Uh, replace him with this person. And, you know, there's hotshot salespeople out there right now that are thinking to myself, no, nope, not me. I'm too valuable. Okay, buddy. <laughs> until you aren't. Until you aren't. <laughs> so um, the, the whole term. So, so people in the comments, <laughs> start, start, people that would come at me disagreeing with me, people would start commenting against them, calling them w tours. You're a w tour. You, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's really take a life of its own on, man. Don't you, uh, you just love trends? Dude, it's, it's so funny. Well, I think people just think it's funny. Don't find W2 are fucking hilarious. Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. Well, I have uh, one more question sure. for you. Yeah. What is the craziest bender of like gambling you've ever been on? <laughs> um, let me think about different ways to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> could have a, I could talk about a bender between January and March of uh, 2020. That, uh, oh, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah, well, it was three different trips where I just got destroyed in the Bahamas and Vegas and vowed vowed that certain things and uh, <laughs> certain things in blackjack do not mix on vacations and uh, never do that again because, uh, oh, my God, it was not good. But um I'll tell you what, man, I, I had, uh, I, I referenced this, this story earlier, but it was just a really, really cool three day period, man. It was in Vegas over the Super Bowl this past year. Um, the Super Bowl was in Vegas. Yeah. And if you've never been to the hosting city, um, during a Super Bowl weekend, you, you should try to experience it. Even if you don't got tickets to the game, just cause like everywhere you damn turn, there's a celebrity, man, Every, everywhere you damn turn. And I got invited to play in this blackjack tournament but there was a celebrity blackjack tournament but i didn't really know what i was walking into and i only got invited because bert kreischer was hosting it and he he follows me and thinks i'm funny so so when we get there and man it's cool man i'm just like fucking baker mayfield um you know and uh Anthony. Right. Yeah, awesome. it was awesome bro and showtime pettis the ufc guy i'll never forget it i didn't know who he was Anthony he, pettis. dude Fuck yeah. well, so now i'm friends with him so i feel funny even saying this but i didn't know who the fuck he was and he came up to me and had his girlfriend take a picture of me and him. <laughs> and, and, and then, and then I, I don't remember exactly what happened. I don't think he, he either posted it and tagged me or, or we exchanged information at some point. And then I realized who he was. And I'm like, that's pretty fucking cool. Because I was still kind of in that growth phase at that point. And I still am. But, but when you got guys like that coming up to you, it's pretty fucking dope, right? Um, and then and just the whole series of events that weekend. And then stuff that not, didn't even have to do with that particular party. Uh, we turn around and I'm at, and then I'm gam that was at the Aria Then I'm at MGM a couple days later and, um, fucking Charles Barkley is on the other side of the high limit room and he's betting pumpkins, dude. I just go over to see what he's betting. He's got a crowd behind him around about, uh, obviously the pumpkins are $25,000 chips. He's playing two hands, 25 and 25. And I could guarantee you if, if someone's doing 25 and 25 like that, it's probably because that's his cap at the casino. Casinos can't cap you. All right. So who knows? Maybe he would have, maybe would have been doing a hundred and a hundred who, who often knows, but he was doing 25 and 25 and, uh, ah, that's pretty fucking cool. Well, 10 minutes later, a guy comes up to me at my table and wants to get a picture, a picture with me. And by the way, again, I'm ha half the followers at this point that I have now, bro. Mm. And uh, things have grown really fast. So, so it comes up to get a picture with me. And um, I go, oh, cool, man. Who are you here with? And he goes, oh, those guys over there. Anyway, he was part of Charles Barkley's entourage. The guy that wanted the picture with me just happened to be buddies with him and was part of Barkley's thing, but <laughs> followed me on Instagram and wanted a, a picture with me. I go, wait, you're with those guys? He goes, yeah, Charles was one of my good friends. <laughs> I go, get the fuck out of here. He goes, you want to meet him? Barkley gets up and leaves his table, walks over to mine, and somebody caught this on camera too. It's like the meet, we're both big guys, <laughs> kind of meet in the middle of this crowd of people and <laughs> dab each other up. It, it almost it almost looked like one of those things, dude, where I like staged it, like I saw which direction he was walking and cut him <laughs> off, but it, but it wasn't. He was walking to me, um, so it was pretty it was pretty cool, man. So so that happened that weekend. Um, and, uh, gosh, I think I ended up winning a hundred grand that weekend. So that was definitely up there. Another one is Fo Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut. Recently, I won a $300,000, um, blackjack tournament, 
David Ortiz, Big Papa was Big Papa. Uh, what's the name? Pop. Big Poppy. Big Papa. Yeah. yeah, Big Poppy. I don't know what I'm talking about. Big Poppy was there, and uh, talk about a big motherfucker, dude. That guy is big, dude. He made me look little, and I guess he was 100 pounds heavier when he actually played. But he's gigantic. That's crazy. Um, so those are the two that would immediately come to mind, I guess. So, um, I uh, I have a, a oh, actually, one more one more. Okay, Another one time, more. I'm at the Bahamar. This is actually when I was on one of my benders that I lost a couple hundred grand. This is yeah. t- between January and March of 2020. I'm at this table. Post fucking Malone's next to me. Michael Jordan walks into the fucking room. Scotty Pippen's in there watching us play. It was like literally, remember that show on MTV back in the day, The Surreal Life? It was like yeah. The Surreal, like where are we right now? This is fucking cool. And the only reason I was in that room is because I was betting fucking 20 grand a hand. So before they all came in, so they were clearing everyone out, but not the asshole betting 20 grand a hand. So, uh, dude, that's, that's, that's freaking amazing. Yeah, that was, that's, uh, that's, that's crazy. Because uh, Michael Jordan's a billionaire. Like, that's fucking that's brother. insane. Yeah. He, he walks in and uh, he, he's got the suitcase with him. And uh, it's like a briefcase. And I go up to him and I go, because we're in the Bahamas, right? So. Yeah. I could lead with that. I'm from Chicago. He'll, he'll like me then if I'm from Chicago. And a lot of people try to be too cool for school for that shit. No, dude, don't like go up to him or whatever. Listen, motherfucker, if you got a chance to meet Michael Jordan, go fucking say hi. Cause it's not like if you're cool yeah. about it, you guys are going to end up being buddies. He's like, Hey, that guy was really cool. Let's start hanging out. No, dude, this is your one chance. <laughs> this is your one chance. You're probably going to get pal. You might want to say hi to him, you know? Um, so I did, and we talked for like a couple minutes. But uh, but Post Malone and uh, Pippen were there for a, a long time. Jordan kind of just came in and out. I think there was like some celebrity golf tournament in town or something. That's why they were all there. Those are amazing stories, yeah. honestly. And uh, speaking of honest, right? Uh, since uh, your fame and fortune mm-hmm. uh, back then, like uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's okay. So back then, it's easier to trust people. Is it easier to trust people now? It's, it's the same. So the trusting people part, you know, for new people, I, I definitely need to pay attention to it. Um, you know, yeah, people kind of appear out of nowhere. I, I think I'm a pretty good gauge of character. I think most people are, you know, it, 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 it's f- figuring out that distinction, right? Okay, okay. Most people aren't just like, trying to rob me or something like that, but they might have ulterior motives of wanting to be around me that leads to some kind of business venture or something like that. And it's hard because that distinction then, you know, becomes, all right, is that the only reason you're here or did you just now we're friends and now you're presenting me with a business idea? I, you know what I mean? It's hard to, it's kind of hard to decipher. So I kind of just stay away from doing business. Um, like I made this rule about a year ago and I ain't doing business with friends of mine anymore. So <laughs> you want to be my friend? Then that's great. And choose one because <laughs> we ain't doing business together. Um, one of the things I think in that same kind of context though that I've kind of figured out about myself is that that's just become really clear is I've always been kind of an, an inclusive person where like, you yeah, know, if I'm having parties or something, hey, everyone's invited. Hey, oh yeah, for sure. Come on, come on, come on. And you know, there's people in your life that aren't going to be happy for you, dude. And um, just as I, re- it could be even family members, bro. And uh, you know, you, you look back in your life and it's like, okay, here was a sign. Here was a sign. Here, This guy only wants to be my best fucking friend when times are kind of shitty, like when, when it's good, yeah. he's not really cur- like that excited about it. Or he's, he's rolling his eyes when something good happens or he doesn't want to hear about it. It's like, you know what, dude, fuck that, man. Fuck yeah. that. You got you want to be on this fucking train. You got to be positive, bro. Period. Positivity always wins. Yeah. Yeah. But it also it always amazes me, dude. It's like, okay, these are your friends that you grew up with, or these are your friends that whatever. And someone keeps going up. Do you want some stranger to go up? Someone's going up, motherfucker. Would you rather be a stranger or a person you're associated with? I, I just don't understand it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That, that's insane. It's, what's insane, too, is the influencers you have met and all these YouTubers and, mm-hmm. like, Bob Mendry. Like, yeah. I'm a huge, like, Nelk Boy full son fan. I, I, yeah. uh, I, when I was in the hospital and... My girl left me. All I would do is just watch their videos. And really? I would just wait every Monday to watch their videos. Man, it was just insane. It was. It was Let's see if uh, 
I'm going to try this. I've never done this before, but he does it to people all the time, so I'm going to try it if it works. What do you think, Bree? Is he going to answer? I don't know. I'm going to do a FaceTime. He might not answer a FaceTime. He might be taking a shit or something. Let's see if he does. If he does, I'll be a secret, but yeah. Let's see. He's going to see me with the headphones on and be like, what the fuck? Whose podcast is this? John, quit using me for clout. Hey. Can you hear me? All right, listen, man. I'm on this guy's podcast. Um, he is... Did you start following me because of Bob? Or no, my it? brother. My brother. What's that? My brother. <laughs> he wants to know if he owes you money. <laughs> tell, him yeah. tell him yeah. He owes everyone money. <laughs> All right, listen, man. <laughs> All right, here. Here, I'm going to... Man, this is fucking insane. Hey, man. I'm gonna bring it over by you, Max. Hold on. You guys wanna check it? Yeah. All right, all right. All right, buddy. Here you go. What's up, man? Uh, my name is Max. Uh, I'm a huge fan of. Uh, Good buddy. Good to see you. I'm a huge fan of Nelk, dude. I uh, I got paralyzed from a car accident when I was in the military in 2016, and I started, uh, my brother showed me the channel when they had like 500,000 subscribers. And I was like, dude, these guys are so funny. And they made my day because my girlfriend left me like when I got paralyzed. And I just kept watching oh, you know, them and watching them. Fuck her. <laughs> yeah, fuck, fuck her. her. You're right, you know. And fuck her. Fuck that bitch. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Sorry right? to hear that. Uh, all that that happened. Sorry to hear all that happened. No, it's, uh, <laughs> um, but it, it, it seems like you're a big Nelk fan and not a Bob Mentory fan here. What's going on? Well, I'm going to use me to get. To, I'm going to join your girlfriend in a minute. I'm, okay. so, so I'm, I'm, I'm just. Dude, I'm sorry. I didn't watch Bob Mentory when I was in the hospital. My brother didn't right. introduce me. Well, <laughs> I now we're homies, so I appreciate it. We'll and, uh, I'll, I'll connect you at some point to the Nelk boys. Uh, I. That's. I I, did, I wasn't asking for that, but I really appreciate that, honestly. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank, thank, thank you for answering. Tell John I said hello and miss him. All right. Yeah. Uh, I'll talk to him. You miss him. All right, <laughs> all right, buddy. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for calling. 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 Yeah, Bob, Bob forgets sometimes. He goes back and forth. So, so he, he, he'll be with Nelk, and he's doing full send right now, but he likes to be his own brand, too, because his relationship with Nelk is in and out. <laughs> well, dude, that just made my fucking year. There you Holy go, buddy. Shit, man. There you go, God buddy. damn it. All right. I, dude, th thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really do appreciate it, honestly. I really do, like... I, I, I really hope this, like, the algorithm helps and I'm able to, like, you know, get my word on the message, you know. I, wa I want to get the new era of Life to the Max out. I, I I used to be pretty quiet on the other podcast because I had a co-host and uh, we ended up went separate ways. And I didn't think I could do it alone. But um, I... Uh, well, for, for people listening to one of the things that, that I, that's interesting about Max that I didn't even really realize was when we talked last week. So you got a big, a big mouth like me or a big mouth like Mentory that, that can't keep our mouth shut. Well, when you talk to Max, there's plenty of opportunities to chime in. Well, as you explained to me, your diaphragm is part of the paralysis. Yeah. So it takes a couple seconds. He's, you're all there yeah, right. mentally. But the words can't come out fast enough because of his breathing. And it has to be one of the most frustrating things when you're talking to a guy like me that doesn't shut the fuck up. Hey, John, let me finish the fucking sentence. Well, and it's frustrating because I want to yell like you, too. And I can't <laughs> yell, you know what I mean? Yep. But, but no, it's, a, you know, I wouldn't trade, trade my life for anything. And I'm, I'm happy God gave, it to, gave this position to someone that could handle it. Right on, you know brother. Because I mean? there's a lot of people that can't, and there's a lot of people that are like just upset with the world. And I choose to say, "Fuck being upset. Mm -hmm. Fuck the devil taking over. I'm gonna make the best." Yep. Right on, brother. Keep doing what you're doing, buddy. So, uh, without further ado, look into uh, which camera is him. Camera two. Look into camera two. Uh, 
Let's tell the people where you're at, your handles, and uh, just tell them you're living life to the max, bro. At John Sarasani on Instagram is where I'm most active, but at John Sarasani on TikTok, at John Sarasani TV on YouTube. Now, you can go to at John Sarasani on YouTube, but it's going to be like pictures of my kids and like my <laughs> parents' funeral and stuff like that. <laughs> but if you go to at John Sarasani TV, you're going to see the content that you're looking for. And uh, listen, guys, 2000% raise has, has brought me into different things. And uh, today's going to be one of those memories for me, buddy. Thanks for letting us do this. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Just a couple of buns, all trying to get by. Just a couple of teens, all trying to survive. Live to the max, cause you don't live it twice. Couple green thumbs, all heights, okay? Just a couple of buns, all trying to get by. Just a couple of teens, all trying to survive. Live to the max, cause you don't live it twice. Couple green thumbs, all heights, okay? Lights, camera, action, hold the bullshit. Smile. Kinda baggy, looking wavy like the ocean. Keep it in the dry, cause you know the smell of potent. Never really tripping, try my best to stay focused. Keep it bogus, my head on a swivel, looking out for the locust. I'm on 10 toes.